Would you welcome to Central Christian Church, Mr. Ted Williams. Everybody, hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all. Beloit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that pastor, you the yes. man. You the man. I love you. Oh, man. I thank God I for you. you. Yeah. Hey, just to dispel any rumors that that was a fake voice, when you're listening to nothing but the best of oldies, you're listening to Magic 98.9, my God-given gift. I just wanted to share with you. Oh, oh. Uh. What a privilege to be in Beloit, Wisconsin, home of real Wisconsin cheese. So I, <laughs> That's the truth. You know, I got to say one thing before we begin. I, when I worked in radio, which Pastor is going to allude to here shortly, but when I, when I was working in radio before, we had a, sub, uh, a submarine uh, 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 um, restaurant that used to always love for me to do their commercials. <laughs> but one of the ingredients in their subs was real Wisconsin cheese. I mean, and they really emphasize, make sure you say real Wisconsin. I'm saying to myself, does Wisconsin have fake cheese anywhere? No way! No, no, no. Real. You know, I am always insecure about my voice. I kind of feel like I'm like Mickey Mouse speaking to you guys oh, every week. No. But this weekend, I feel like I've just sucked helium and I'm talking with uh, Ted. <laughs> we are, uh, we're grateful to have you with us. Thank, um, you. Thank you. His book, oh my gosh. Um, it's, it's awesome, profound. It's not um, always a pretty picture of your life when you went into dark places, but it's very real. Yeah, and our right. God is a rescuing God, a delivering God, yes. and you're sitting up here with me as an excellent example that God is the God of the second chance. Second chance. And we all need it. We all need it. Yes. Third chance, fourth, fourth chance. Chances, yeah, yeah, right on. He doesn't stop at the second chance. But I wanted to tell you that video that you saw earlier, it's had 110 million hits on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, but Ted hates it. And if you read the opening pages of his book, let me just share with you. He says, I see a version of myself in that video that I don't like. Crazy hair sticking out in all directions. Unshaven, brown, rotten teeth. Dirty camouflage jacket. I see the desperate eyes of a hustler out of hustles, an addict at the end of two decades of bad decisions with nothing left to do but smile and perform for a guy who rolls down his window and says those famous nine words, I'm going to make you work for your dollar. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. of the reasons I wanted to um, share that poignant opening of his book is because there's much more to Ted's life and yours. If they put my life, yeah. your life in a one-minute video, um, and we had no choice of the one minute, uh, it'd scare us all to death because there was a time when you were on top of the world. Yeah, yeah. You were at the peak of popularity in a huge market, Columbus, Ohio, the radio field. You met celebrities. Uh, if you would spend some time sharing with us about your life when it was up, up, up back in 1984. That's 1984. And in 1984, Columbus, Ohio didn't have any urban stations. We didn't have any black listenership and stations as well. But in 1984, Columbus acquired a, uh, a radio station, WCKX. And I was blessed, I was blessed to have a job doing weekday mornings from 6 a.m. till 10 a.m. Yours truly, Ted Williams, was on the air. And uh, I met, like you mentioned, many celebrities. Many, many, many. Luther Vandross, Diana Ross. Oh, my gosh. Prince. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. Prince, you know, uh, Morris Day. The names go on. But there was something missing, Pastor. What was that? God. There was no God. I never prayed. I never not once ever got on my knees to say, thank you, Lord, for meeting Diana Ross. Thank you, Lord, for meeting Miss, uh, 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 Miss uh, uh, Melissa Morgan. Wow. Or, and, and many of the names. I never thanked God for this voice. I never, not once, ha uh, telling him, thank you, Lord, for the success of my radio, my, my radio show. Yeah. I had great numbers. I was doing well. I was doing very well, at least I thought. And um, at, at the time, I had left my wife with four of my children. Mm. So for four years, I was just uh, having a great time, and I, I left my, my wife with four of my daughters and didn't care nothing about it, and then went and met a young lady and had four more children mm. while still legally married to the woman who had my first four babies. So I was kind of godless, I would say, uh, uh, in that time. Which... Um 
It's kind of surprising. I don't know if surprising is the right word, but you had a very godly mother. Yes. Who prayed yes. for you and prayed for you and prayed for you. Right. But uh, what I want us to catch here, uh, what Ted is going to share with us in a little bit, is that gratitude is transformative. Gratitude totally changes our life for the good. When we are grateful to God, grateful to God, grateful to God for everything in our lives. Yes. But the opposite is also true. When we are ingrates, when there's no room for gratitude in our hearts for everything God brings into our lives, we go on a downward death spiral. And your dream life turned into a nightmare. Uh, why don't totally. you share about the well, death spiral with well, us? Well, as Pastor just mentioned, I want to say, uh, just say, take time out to say that, yeah, my, I had a very prayerful mother. I came from a very spiritual background, well, maybe over-spiritual, if there's any such thing. My, I was raised in a household where my father for 45 years was a Jehovah Witness. My mother for 50 years attended the same Baptist church for 50 years, never missing a Sunday. And I went to a uh, Catholic school. You got the basic So you covered. can imagine how much God was running rampant in my home. I didn't know whether this year was going to be a Christmas tree or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know. And my dad was always, he Jehovah Witness that he was, you know, you never give nothing on Christmas. So I was one of the few kids that after they broke all their toys on Christmas Day and everything, I would have like Christmas three days later and I had fresh toys, <laughs> you know. But um, as, as Pastor uh, mentioned, I had all of this going for me. I had a great radio career um, and I had the, 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 my, my, my four children by this woman and four by this. So I had kids, they were all blessed to have had all five fingers and five toes and all. But uh, with, God, with the omission of God, in 1988, I had my first son. Mm. And uh, uh, having four daughters previously, I thought at this point I couldn't make boys. So as a congratulatory offer, I was given some crack for my first son. You know, uh, it was laced in a joint of marijuana. In Columbus, we call that Primo's. So I started on Primo's. I didn't actually start with a glass pipe. But the Primos was enough to graduate me to that. And mm. Pastor, I can't say. In 1993, I had amassed a criminal record. I no longer cared about my God-given gift, nor did I care about my job that I had gotten, I, I, a dream job, something I had always wanted to do. I lived mm. my dream, and I just didn't care. When I went on the air at 6.05 in the morning, when I would say, it's five minutes after 6 o'clock, good morning, Columbus, I was wishing that the next time I said the time, it would be 10 o'clock, that's it for me, I got to go. I, I didn't care for those four hours. I, I would barely open up the mic. All I thought about was crack. I wanted a blast. Yeah. And so I, I think I've mentioned to you on a few occasions, Pastor, I thought of myself as being like Job. Hmm. Really, Job-like. Certainly not with the, I mean, uh, with the um, intensity of service that Job had. Mm. But I feel like that God told the devil, have your way with him. Do anything you want to him, okay? But don't take his life. And I guarantee you he will not question why these are happening. And I guarantee you he won't curse me. Mm. So the devil had his way with me. So what did that look like when Satan had his way with you? Oh, I mean, you're addicted it, to crack. It looked like... It looked like that, that God kept his promise about not destroying the world with a flood or mm. water anymore. It looked like the earth was truly destined to be destroyed by fire. And I was thinking that the sign of a big lighter was the way that, that, that we were going to leave here, that all crackheads throughout the world were buying. I'm telling you, the stock in big lighters have went tremendous in the past 20 years. And chore, you know, stuff that you put inside the pipe, I'm sure people are still buying stocks into that because when you go to stores now, they sell lighters faster than anything. So that's what I really thought, that maybe this is going to be destruction of the earth is people with lighters because it said, I'll, you know, by fire. So I'm yeah. figuring light. So I took, well, I think you may have to ask me another question about that. But <laughs> I just want to say, I just want to say that, that, that in 1993, my first touch of homelessness took me there. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things I want, we've talked about, and I want these guys to catch, because this is the way I believe God works. Ted's mom, through all this, you know, a mom's heart, a Christian mom's heart, a, 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 his mom, a Christ follower, her heart was filled with two things, pain over her son and prayers for her son. She prays, she prays, she prays, she prays. So here's what God does. God 
lets you see that flame of that big lighter yeah. and think of the destruction of the world, the destruction of your life. God is trying to break through. Yeah. God is trying yes, to save you. God is trying to rescue you. Yes, he was. He is good. The, uh, uh, a mother's prayer, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, nothing like a mother's prayer. That's what I've seen. You know, prayer is one thing because some of these prayers that I've prayed for have been prayed over 25 years ago. Certainly nothing of this magnitude where I'm the world's most recognized person. But truly, the, some of the things that are going on now, like the reconnection with my mother and my family, these were prayers that I prayed 25 years ago in jail cells. In, in my lonely time, uh, I prayed and prayed. And I never thought for one time or never asked, well, Lord, I've been praying for years and you ain't never answered my prayer. Did you forget about me? Am I not living the right way for you to even uh, 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 phantom the idea of blessing me with one of my prayers to be answered? I never questioned none of that. I just prayed and prayed wow. and prayed and prayed. Mm. Yeah. Well, here you are. You're on the street, yes. no job, yes. no income, yes. and you got a crack addiction oh, that well, costs big time. So yeah. how did you get the money to pay for the crack? Oh, it was no problem. At least I thought, you know, uh, Dr. Phil, bless his heart. Uh, made sure everybody knows that I have a criminal record. So if you, Pastor, let's say you needed some hygiene products or you needed some laundry detergents or you needed some, a Bluetooth, I would go to AT&T and get you a Bluetooth. Walk right out the store with it and dare anybody to touch me mm. on my way leaving. I can't tell you how many times, or if a detergent, I would just take two Tide concentrated uh, loads of detergent, throw them under my armpits and walk out. A lot mm. of times workers would say, sir, 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 would you put that down? I would keep walking mm. and, and, they, and, and dare them mentally to touch me, mm. you know. I didn't fear the police. I didn't fear anybody. It was just like I had to do this, you know. And sure, I got arrested many times. Um, here's a story I haven't told in your other services. Oh, cool. I'm walking, in, I'm walking in jail. Every time I go to jail, they know me as the radio guy. You know, they say, oh, man, what in the world did the radio dude do today and everything. So... I would have this one saying, and, 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 and it pertains to anybody that's been arrested that can, can identify. Sometimes I get mad at the people, the deputies or the sheriffs or whoever run those jails. All their job, now mind you, they make $27 to $30 an hour for just turning a key from right to left to open the, and close the door or to feed you. They say trays up, you know, or food up or whatever. So I had this one thing that I would always say. It would say, can you turn a key from right to left? Can you say trays up and roll them up? Well, then you too can be a Franklin County deputy. Call 1-800. And so the deputies used to get mad. So one day I was in the shower and I didn't have the, uh, uh, I didn't have nobody to send me money where I could buy my own soap. So I used state soap and state soap is not the best uh, to get you clean. You know what I mean? So I'm in the shower and all the guys wanted to hear the radio thing again. And I didn't know that the police, uh, the, the sheriff was in there doing count. Every hour they do a count. So I'm in the shower and I'm, I'm, I'm lathering up with my state soap. And all of a sudden I said, can you turn a key from right to left? Can you say trays up and roll them up? Well, then you too can be a Franklin County deputy. And the water just went. <laughs> it just went off. And the deputy opened up the curtain and said, and tell him we turn showers off too. <laughs> my skin drew up. The, the, the lie in my, because it has lie in it. I had all drew behind my ears. I was crying, please, deputy, turn it back on. Let me rinse off. So that was one of my jailhouse stories. <laughs> but yeah, he said, tell him we turn the showers off too, Ted. But um, I can't tell you, tell you how, 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 how I, I feel. I felt like I, I just embarrassed my mother. I'm an adopted child and, um, and, and, and an only child, an only child. And uh, I just felt like I was killing my mother. But those prayers were mm. so, so, so much into her heart until I found that scripture. Yeah, in jail. In yeah. jail, I found the scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not toward your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. When I read that, Pastor, it was like, oh, acknowledge him in all your ways. Lean not toward your own understanding. You know, all of those things started clicking in and I started internalizing them. So mm. when I got out of jail, I, where it says, acknowledge him in all your ways, I was at crack houses talking about God. 
I was smoking, and everybody would light up at the same time, and then I'd say, you know, Jesus loves you, and they would go, come on, man, don't be talking about God in here. We might all get hit by a bolt of lightning or something. You said, no, man, that's very sacrilegious. That's very blasphemous to sit in a cracker. But I said, God said, acknowledge me in all your ways. So eventually I stopped going to those crack dens. Mm. I didn't stop uh, mm. uh, smoking crack now. I just start, started separating what I was doing. I wanted to ask myself at this point, what have I done for God? Mm. What have I done for God today? Did I smile at somebody? Did I wish somebody well, a good day or whatever? Did I give somebody something? Did I pick up that trash I threw on the floor, on the ground? This is, an, this is another true story, uh, uh, Pastor. I, and it's in the book. I'm sure Marissa will testify to this. I threw some garbage and walked a quarter mile away from it. Just, just threw it. I've been throwing garbage down. Nothing's never touched me. Hmm. God said, if you don't go back and pick that up, your blessings ain't right today. I walked back a quarter mile, and my girlfriend, she couldn't walk all the way there and then walk all the way back with me. I walked back that quarter mile, picked it up, put it in my pocket, and caught back up with her. Didn't think no more of it or didn't look up and say, Lord, I picked it up or whatever. Mm. But those things started coming. The more mm. I acknowledged him, the more. So the Lord said to me, Ted, for all this time, you have never, not once, sat in a church and gave me one hour any Sunday or any Saturday or any Wednesday. You've never given me one hour of your time a week. Right now, I want you to give me one hour a day. Mm. Because I thought anybody that's standing on a corner begging for people, begging for money, and their charity heart, their charitable heart, their benevolent heart, and all of that, just begging for money, just telling people, getting on, 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 tele, on, on a camera and telling the man, I got two years clean, when it was apparent that I was not two years clean. I, I didn't look like nobody two years clean. At least the people I see with two years clean, like this lovely lady over here, has seven years, thank God. But I can honestly stand here before you today, on this January, I mean on this uh, uh, April 2013, everything in this year marks the second anniversary for me. January 4th, it's been two years. And on May 4th, I celebrate two years. Hey. I had to throw that in there. So, as a result... I uh, started, like I say, doing um, uh, 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 less and less of, the, of what the devil wanted. I wanted to talk to God mm. until that one day I'm standing on the corner. And this has been 18 months, mind you. Still prayers are going. My girlfriend's still prostituting. Uh, I'm still, I'm not stealing no more. At this point, for 18 months, I hadn't stole, you know, uh, uh, off and on. But, but none of which, no, yeah, yeah, I had to, the Lord said, come on now, keep it real, keep it real. <laughs> Off and on. It wasn't, it, 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 you know, for the same amount of time that I stood on that corner, Pastor, for the same amount of time that I stood on that corner begging for people to give me money, I could have made that money in five minutes. But there was a purpose to keep me on that corner for right an on. hour. Now, I could have went to Walmart and came out with some merchandise that I knew I could have gotten my dope, extra money, and been done for the day. But it seemed like God drove me to that corner, literally. And my girlfriend, she felt so sad. Here's a prostitute feeling sorry for a street person bumming. So I, I, it's like I didn't feel for you, getting mm. in and out of cars, getting in this, that, and the other, and you're feeling more for me than what I should be feeling for you. So it was because she would look at me and say, Ted, don't stand out today. All I got to do is just get two customers. That's all, too. You know, and I'm like, baby, don't do it. Just sit your butt over there and wait for me. And I would stand there. And so one day, I'm standing on the corner, and uh, my telephone rings. I had a telephone. It was a little net 10 phone. But I certainly didn't put my sign down to say, hello? Yeah. It wasn't none of that. I opened up my phone in my pocket and flipped it open and pushed the speaker and said, hello? How you doing? Who? A golden voice homeless man. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll call him and find out. They said a local radio station had, uh, had been looking for a homeless man with a golden voice. Well, I just thought of it as being a radio job. I finally got my prayers answered. Here I go up again. Because there's many instances, which I think I'll tell you uh, here shortly, there were many instances where I saw the power of prayer and God being in my life, on that corner, on that corner. So... Uh, and, and I'll give you two examples real quick. Here's the first one. I'm, I'm uh, uh, standing on the corner, been out there for about uh, 40 minutes. 
And here comes this lady, drives right alongside me, and she says, hold on, honey, I got something for you. She rolls the window down, and then she goes and digs in her bag. And while she's digging in her bag for the money, I'm standing over her car, looking in her pocketbook, and she's not coming out with nothing. She's digging, and so the first thing I thought was, ooh, I got a $20 bill, I'm getting ready to get, it's on, you know? I'm, I'm predicting what this woman's gonna pull out. Well, the traffic light patterns were moving from green to red, green to red, green to red. People are blowing. I'm not moving, and I'm standing there, and finally the lady pulls out 13 cents. I can't tell you how mad I was mentally. I was like, I could have been walking around. Oh, oh, but the lady looked at me and promised me. She said, honey, listen, if you're here tomorrow at 4 o'clock, I get paid tomorrow, I'll give you some money. Please be here, and this, that, and the other. And the Lord... Uh, 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 talk to my heart. He said, if you make that lady not feel any kind of worthiness of, of giving you that 13 cents just as much as you would if a person gave you a $100 bill, then I'm not giving you nothing. You make that lady. So I had to look at that lady and, one, and that acknowledgement process in Proverbs came to play that I'm hearing God's voice and I'm going to act on it. And so what I did was I said, ma'am, I won't be here tomorrow, but don't worry about it. I'm okay. This will help me get where I got to go. And thank you very much. And I love you. She said, are you sure? I said, honey, believe me, I'm sure. She rolls up her window. She said, well, thank you. Goodbye. As soon as she pulls off, two cars later, a man drives up and gives me $40, two $20 bills, because I acknowledged God's voice. And that's what I do today. I listen for God's voice because, Pastor, and you know it, there's, uh, there's so many ways we can hear God's voice through each other, through the word through the Bible, through so many. So I was listening to really for God. And another instance came out where I was standing out there on a, uh, a Michigan-Ohio State game, and I figured, wow, these state students are going to give me some money. It's going to be a real great day because there were lines and lines and rows and rows and lanes and lanes of traffic. So I just knew it was going to be a good day. I stood out there for an hour, freezing. It was like three or four below zero. I didn't have no gloves on. So now I'm getting pissed off at the people that are passing me because I feel like they have no compassion for somebody who's literally shaking like drugstore dice. I mean, my, my sign was waving and all. But the Lord said to me, why are you getting mad at these people who it is quite evident that you're not going to use a dollar that they give you to go buy you any gloves over at the Family Dollar or the Dollar General? Why are you getting mad at these people? So be, uh, as soon as I put my sign and acknowledge what God was saying, and I heard his voice, I started saying, hi, go Bucks! Hey, how you doing, man? Go Bucks! Thank you, ma'am. And this car drives up out of nowhere, this is no lie, drives up out of nowhere, rolls the window down, and said, hey, buddy, your hand's cold? I said, they sure are, sir, and he threw me a pair of gloves. And the way he threw them looked like, I call them my heaven-sent uh, uh, gloves, because they looked like they fell right from the sky and dropped on the ground, and I picked them up and got ready to put them on. Before I could say anything, the car was gone. I don't know whether the light changed or what, but he, he never stood around for me to say, thank you. And I looked up at God, and, and this is my thing. Sometimes when I see, the, see miracles and blessings and all, I always look up and say, Lord, you a beast, boy. I love you. <laughs> you know? I was happy. <laughs> thank you. I was very happy. And here, here, here's another situation. As I'm putting on the gloves and thanking God for them gloves, I walk in a car and say, beep, 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 beep. Yes, sir. A $10 bill. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, my hands were warm, you know. And I almost wanted to go back out. And just now that I had stayed out there, remember I told you God told me one hour? I had already stayed my hour, so it wasn't like I was going to make a concession with God and say, hey, I, I need 30 minutes overtime, Lord, you know. But it was truly, truly one of those blessings where mm. I had to be thankful for the little blessings. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I just want you guys to see, we've got about 14 more minutes okay. to share with them, but a mom's prayer, mom praying, 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 yeah. God working on her son's life in the worst of situations, but God tells Ted to go to that corner one hour a day. Ted obeys for 18 months. Yes, yes. And that's when the young man, the videographer, shows up takes his video, God had this all planned, all arranged to rescue this man, but, but the rescue happened on the basis of the obedience to go and stand 
and then God comes through. Yeah, because I knew nothing about YouTube, your tube, my tube, anybody's tube. I didn't know anything about that, you know. I didn't know that this man was going to post anything on YouTube. And I get that call, and we go down to the radio station, satellite trucks, CNN, CBS, ABC, NBC, all of these people. I'm thinking I'm going in there to meet the president or somebody, you know, or, or whatever. I just couldn't imagine. And the minute I walk through the door, Pastor, hi, the golden voice man, the viral guy, the, the you know, and I'm looking at my friend like, what's going on? I'm stepping back, and, and I'm taking advantage of it, but who wants a poor raggedy wretch like me? Uh, talking about my voice, everything, and just three days prior, I got to say this, and I have to, I, I don't mean to plug the Today Show, but through years in history, uh, the Today Show has been a staple point in America's news. Everybody gets their news from the Today Show. So I was looking at the Today Show three days prior to January 4th, which of course on the 5th I was on the Today Show, but three days prior, I'm laying on the floor, and I said, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Who knew three days later I'd be on the Today Show going live from Studio 1A? It, I mean, it was like, wow, so surreal. I mean, unreal, unreal. And, and I couldn't believe it. And I got a chance to meet Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer. I mean, that was almost like meeting, oh, God, the president, I'll say, President Barack Obama. I, you know, it, it was that, it, he was like my, not idol, I don't want to put idol, but he was somebody I really looked up to. So in doing that, I just felt like I had died and gone to heaven. So I get invited to do a late night television show, late night with Jimmy Fallon, and I go on and he asks me, what was it like meeting Jimmy, I mean, uh, uh, Matt Lauer? And I looked at him and said, Jimmy, meeting Matt just brought the female out in me. <laughs> he laughed so hard on that video, and you can look it up, he laughed so hard that he raised up and said, me too, Ted, me too. <laughs> but I, I can honestly tell you, I'll be at 45 gay events this year. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was really, really, I, I found out the word of man crush. I had a man crush <laughs> on Mr. Matt Lauer. <laughs> so I, I was happy. I was happy. I was so happy meeting these people and met the lovely uh, Robin Roberts um, and, and so many other people. And then came Doc. Bill. Lord have mercy. Never, never seen the man. All I thought was Dr. Phil was just a um, guy who knew Oprah Winfrey and she, you know, gave him his own show. There's Dr. Phil. You know, meeting Dr. Phil was probably a godsend because you know how the saying goes, sir, what you do in the dark comes out mm, in the light. Yep. I hope this doesn't happen to you, but he brought every dark thing I could have ever done, uh, being a deadbeat dad, being a criminal, being all of these things, he brought it all out in the forefront. So, meeting Dr. Phil, and then I met the people who, the publishing company, and all while I'm at Dr. Phil's, they're robbing me. People are robbing me. I had signed so many things. I, I was so overwhelmed. I was just signing, taking pictures, signing, taking pictures, signing, and I nearly signed my life away, literally. But um, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And there's that power of prayer. I prayed those people out of me. The people yeah. that stole from me and took all my money and everything back then early. And I was getting a little mad. A lot of people were saying, man, you need to criminally prosecute uh, those people. Why? Who am I to criminally prosecute those people when I've deprived and stole from people myself? You know? So I turned the other cheek. And I turned the other cheek. So finally I asked God, Lord, I only got two cheeks. How many more cheeks do they, you know, because right now I'm ready to go to blows with what I know, I revert back to the street person that I was. So I was ready to go to that, but the Lord said, I will take care of you. That's what I felt. And lo and behold, he got rid of the manager, hmm. and Dr. Phil sent me to treatment. Hmm. I left treatment after only eight days. I thank God that he had Lindsay Lohan and Charlie Sheen to take the heat off of me leaving after eight days. In 2011, Charlie Sheen was winning and, and Lindsay Lohan was stealing everything that wasn't nailed down. So I was very grateful that they kind of kept the heat away from me. So I left and I found out that I was being robbed and, I, and there were things that I signed. This book deal that I signed had, had guaranteed me a book advance of $375,000. Uh, 
Crackhead, mind you, just four days ago, you know, didn't have two nickels to rub together, but now he's managing 375000 Here's the trick. There were a lot of top voiceovers. I mean, I'm talking about people that make a million a year that had band together to take advantage of me. And I signed more percentages away from my book, my life story and everything, to where when this book was published and sold worldwide or whatever, I only stood to make, out of that $375,000, $10,000. That would have been all I could have taken home. Thank you, Ted. Good doing business with you. See you later. That was it, Ten grand. Now here's the power of prayer again. Lord, what do I do? Uh, I prayed this person out of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get the money I thought I was going to get. What do I do? And he sends me an attorney. I didn't have an attorney before. I just had a quote-unquote uh, self-made self, uh, uh, manager, agent, and all of those things. So now he sent me an attorney. My attorney out there is Brett Adams. This is a man who represents some very high-profile people in the sports world. He has some names. He, he's, he has the who-who's list of names that he represents. So I was a little, you know, apprehensive about him even wanting me. But what he did was he renegotiated this book deal. He took people off of those percentages that they stood to make, threatened them with lawsuits and all. Only one person, only one person stayed on to more or less catch the, 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 blunt, the brunt end of what was going on. And so now my attorney, bless his heart out there, he saved everything of the book deal except $75,000. So I managed to keep everything, God, power of prayer, I managed to keep everything except $75,000 in which I settled an out-of-court lawsuit, which nobody heard of. You know, nobody, you know, it seems like there are just as many people waiting to see me fail mm, as there yes. are people who wait or waiting to see me uh, succeed. But who am I? They hated Jesus Christ, and he was a perfect man. Yeah. So I, I, there were a lot of people that said, you left Dr. Phil, shame on you. <laughs> you know, you did that to Dr. Phil, he was going to do. Well, he also renegotiated uh, a deal with Dr. Phil, and Dr. Phil was more than glad to give me a second, second chance. And so I went back in May of 2011, and uh, my attorney gave me an ultimatum. He said, either you stay in treatment and get the help that you need, or I don't really need you, because I've got some celebrities that I make money off of daily, and I certainly don't need you. Now, when somebody puts something like that to you, you know, you kind of want to like, uh-oh, I better do a little something, somebody says. And I did. I completed and we have a great, my attorney and I, he's one of the few attorneys that I've ever heard anybody speak about an attorney relationship with them. It's like, oh, that's my attorney, that's my lawyer. But now I can honestly call this man friend. Mm. He's my attorney slash friend. Mm. And uh, y'all are not going to believe this, and I'm probably throwing him under a bus by saying this, but you already know, Pastor and Marissa, you know. Brett, he's not an atheist, but he's a non-believer. So God gave me him just as much as he gave him, me. Hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm showing him the power of God. He's in this sanctuary right today uh, on the other side of the doors. I mean, not because he's phobic about God's presence, but I'm teaching him the wonders of God. Hmm. That's what I, uh, you know, God told me, said this, I am not an example or anything uh, uh, for God's sake, but what I am is a reminder. Hmm. I am a human reminder of what God can do for you too. That's right all. I don't think of myself as a saint. I'm just a reminder that God is still alive and he's still in the business of working miracles mm. because there are a lot of people out there that think that uh, this was just, uh, I was at the right place at the right time. Mm. I was, it was a stroke of luck. It was uh, anything other than God. There are a mm. lot of people think, uh, that's the first, so that's why acknowledge me in all your ways. And one of the least known facts about me, Pastor, is that um, I'm a very giving person. I don't give uh, 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 with any strings attached or any expectations. One of the things I used to hate to hear people say, here, here's a dollar, man. Don't go use it on no drugs and alcohol. Well, you know what I'm going to do with it. You know, it's a parent. Don't give it to me then. You know, I'd give them back. I'd give back a few dollars. You know, I know you're not. Or the people that, now I've heard people do this too. Lord, my bills are due. And I'm a little behind in this one bill, but I gave that bum down the street $5, Lord, so kind of put that on my, my uh, score sheet. You know, uh, just give. 
give and don't care about where it's going or whatever because I'm sure, and, 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 and I've never said this in the past three services, so y'all, listen to me. If you're a little reluctant about giving anybody any money, whether they be homeless or in need or, or, or foodless or whatever, I'm going to tell you what you can give a, a homeless person that will bring just as much of a smile as if you had given him some money. Give him a pair of socks, a nice, fresh pair of socks. I'm telling you, you'll get a smile, of, a, a thank you, no more than if you gave him a $100 bill. Because when a person has to wear the same socks for two and three weeks, which I have in the 17 years, or if they get so wet that you got to wring them out and put them back on, Socks will be a miracle. So I'm on a sock crusade. <laughs> awesome. Really, I am. I love you, Pastor. I love you. Beloit, Wisconsin, I love you. I love you, really. I might move here. Um, I'm I want to do my leg go, leg go. I'll let you do okay, that. Okay, whenever you read. I love you. We'll be back with more of Pastor right after these words. <laughs> Um, God is good. Thank you. You may, you may be seated. And I, for me, I'm grateful that you're showing your appreciation to Ted because as I've gotten to know him, I wanted our church, when he got here, I wanted our church to serve him in the best way that we could. Um, yeah. I'm grateful that he came to tell his story, but I wanted us in the name of Jesus to add to his life to keep him strong, to keep him on the right path, to keep him listening to God and following uh, our Lord Jesus. And so what I'd like to do right now, uh, if anybody in this room, and I know you're here, that you've struggled with addiction, that you're in recovery right now, would you stand up and come to the front? I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to ask you to lay hands on Please. Ted. And I'm going to pray for We're him. We're all standing in the need of prayer. Well, they come, would you give your poem? Hey, listen, let go, let God, I'm sure. Come on up. Uh, uh, let go and let God. A lot of times we have a lot of problems, a, a lot of uh, uh, hardships in dealing with, with some problems that overwhelm us, you know. And so you just have to let go and let God work in your life. And here's a poem that constitutes that for me. You ready? As children bring their broken toys with tears for me to mend, I brought my broken dreams to God because He is my friend. But instead of leaving Him in peace to do His work alone, I hung around and tried to help with the ways that were my own. And at last I cried and I snatched them back and said, Lord, how could you be so slow? My child, what could I do? He said, you never did let go. I love you. Hey, look at my family. Well, everybody, let's put hands on each other. Oh, come on over here. I love you. I love you. Father God, we call down your goodness on this man who has yes, served Lord. us so well, who now spends the last two years. We're grateful for two years of sobriety. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for a lifetime more, Lord God, that you help him. Lead yes. him not into temptation, Lord, but deliver him from evil. Yes, and we yes, pray right yes. now your goodness be prevailing in his life from the top of his head to the yes, bottom of his Lord, feet to I the center you. of his being. Everywhere, your goodness, Lord God. We thank you that you are a rescuing God, yes. a God whose goodness cleanses us yes, of every Lord. sin, yes, a God whose Lord. goodness gives us strength at every point of weakness, a God whose goodness is wisdom, yes. a God whose goodness restores relationships, yes. reconciles relationships, yes. redeems relationships. We thank you that you've got him back together with his mom, that you've got him back together with children. Lord, any strain I that's there, Jesus, any tension that's there, you. continue to work that out. Lord, we thank you for his grandchildren. And right now, yes. we thank you in the name of Jesus as you bless his life. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. amen. 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 I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, I, I've got one, one little thing, one last thing. Can I, Pastor? Sure. One last thing. Part of this blessing, part of this blessing has been the reconnection process with my family, right? Now, listen to this. I'm so grateful that me and my mother finally got together. She loves me again. I got the trust. And I've got, uh, I haven't been able to Thank really you, mend that you. relationship with my daughters, my four girls. They have a lot of uh, resentment issues and, and anger issues, and rightfully so. I thought when I got all of this, I was going to be able to have money and be able to buy their affection and their love. But that doesn't work. You can't heal the heart with money or anything, right? So what I can do as a, as a result of my blessings and my reconnections is be the grandfather to my grandchildren be, uh, uh, that, that I didn't have the privilege of being a father to my children, so I'm having a great time with my, my grandchildren. And here's God's sense of humor. You ready? 
God not only transformed my smile, he gave me a national advertising spot with Kraft macaroni and cheese, and it goes, Kraft homestyle macaroni and cheese, cheesy noodles topped with golden brown breadcrumbs. You know you love it. Now listen, that's the, that's the uh, tagline. You know you love it. So from time to time, I've often thought about standing on that same corner and just smiling and going, you know you love it. <laughs> you know you love it. But instead, God's sense of humor now has my grandchildren running around saying, Papa, you know you love it. <laughs> Papa, you know you love it. Thank you all, Beloit. I love you. Pastor, you the man. You the man. I love you. We'll keep praying for you. Please, don't stop. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.